Hi. The title of the talk is Generalized Degrees of Freedom of the Interference Relation with Strong Interference. This is joint work with my colleagues Soil Gereklo and Anna Schaban. We are from the Ruhr University in Bochum, in Germany. So here's the outline of the talk. I will introduce the concept of the generalized degree of freedom by considering the basic interference challenge first. Then I'm going to present the results we have on the generalized degree of freedom of the interference relay channel. And while discussing the GDF, I'm going to present the achievability scheme which obtains the GDF. Here's the basic interference channel with two transmitters and two receivers. And since the transmitters are active at the same time, they cause interference via those interfering links at the non-intended receivers. We assume that the channels are real and that we have a power constraint at each node given by P. We now define the parameter alpha, which re relates the received interference power to the received desired power in this way. So the larger the interference gets, the larger gets alpha. Given alpha, we, we can now define the GDF, which equals the slope of the sum capacity in the asymptotically high power region. What we have done in the figure here, for convenience, is to replace the channel parameters by alpha and one respectively. The GDF as a function of alpha is shown here. This is a well-known W curve, which was shown by Atkin, C, and Wang in 2008. For us of interest is this regime here. As you can see, the GDF is a linearly increasing function of alpha in this regime, which is referred to as a strong interference regime, and it stays constant in this regime, which is referred to as a very strong interference regime. Now, by deploying an additional node, as done here, we obtain the interference relay channel. The relay is connected to the transmitters via those links here parameterized by gamma, and the receivers are connected via those links here parameterized by beta. The question is now, what is the impact of the relay on the generalized degrees of freedom? Here, we have again the GDF of the interference channel. For convenience, I have drawn a part of the setup such that we do not have to memorize which links were associated to alpha, gamma, and beta. Okay. For example, we consider here in this presentation, we assume that beta is equal to 2 and gamma is equal to 3. In the figure, we observe that when interference is very, very strong, then the GDF of the interference uh, relay channel has the same constant behavior as, the, as in the case of the IC counterpart. Similarly, as the interference is strong, we observe that the GDF is a linearly increasing function of alpha. The behavior uh, of the GDF in the remaining regime is given here which is somewhat surprising at first. Here, the GDF decreases as a function of alpha, then stays constant, and then continues to increase again as a function of alpha. This is the GDF characteristic, which we do not observe in the basic interference uh, uh, channel and the strong interference channel. Before trying to get insight why the GDF behaves in this way, let us first state the main result of the work. The GDF of the interference channel with alpha larger than 1, which means we are in the strong interference regime, and gamma larger than alpha, is given by the minimum of those four expressions. As you can see, by setting beta equal to 0, we obtain the GDF of the basic interference channel. Now consider again the GDF curve we had before. In order to understand the behavior, it is important to keep in mind the threshold points here and here and here. Okay. As which GDF is basically changing its behavior. So again, this is when alpha is equal to gamma over 2, when alpha is equal to gamma beta, and when alpha is equal to gamma equal to 3. 
for it. In the regime where alpha is below gamma over 2, which is here, the relay obtains a significantly better observation than the receivers. This can be utilized in such a way that the receivers can provide the relay with additional information in advance, not observable at the receivers, such that the relay is able to act like the cognitive relay, which means it can neutralize the interference. As interference has to be neutralized at both receivers, which we have to keep in mind, the receivers from the transmitters here to the relay have to be shared equally. Okay. To illustrate this point, we rely on the linear highest non-deterministic model. So the first receiver splits its resources into two equal sized parts, green and yellow. As we will see later on, the green and the yellow block relate to each other, which will be clearer, clearer later on. The second transmitter proceeds similar to the first receiver, however, at the gray block of information bits for communication. Those signals now arrive at the relay. Of course, what is observed is the supposition of the signals as shown here. The decoding at the relay works as follows. Assume for now that the green signal is known at the relay. Thus, we can cancel it from the received signal, proceed in decoding the gray signal, and then the yellow signal. I mentioned at the beginning that the yellow and green signal are related to each other. Now, what happens is once the green, uh, yellow signal is decoded, in the next channel you use, it equals the gray, uh, green signal. This justifies our assumption that the green signal here was available to us in the previous channels. Now, in the next channel use, consider the received signal at the receiver one. The signal block of the first receiver, of the first transmitter arrives at those levels here, while the signal block of the interference transmitter arrives at those levels here. Okay. Furthermore, the signal block of the relay arrives at those levels here, at the first receiver. The decoding at the receiver works as follows. We apply backward decoding. So assume for now that this gray signal here is known at the receiver. Thus, we can subtract it from the received signal. And we can decode now this gray signal here while the green signal coming from the second transmitter can be neutralized by the green signal of the relay. What remains essentially is the, gr uh, the green desired information from the first user which we can obtain by successive decoding. Okay. So in summary, the relay is able to, decode, uh, to neutralize all the interference. Thus, each receiver gets a signal block of size alpha Additionally, the second user is uh, obtaining a gray signal of size beta minus alpha. So in total, we have a um, GDF of size alpha uh, plus beta. And this is exactly the behavior of the observe here. What happens in this regime is that the interference uh, becomes larger such that the second transmitter has to reduce the size of the gray signal in order to be able to neutralize all the interference. Okay? So this is the point where alpha is equal to gamma over 2. Now when we increase alpha more, then we observe that the gray signal cannot be decoded anymore, so we have to reduce the size of this block in order to move up the green signal of the relay in order to be able to neutralize this part, okay? So in this regime, the interference is so, so, so strong that we are not able to send any gray signal, as well as neutralize all the interference. Thus, the green signal has to be reduced to enable interference uh, real, uh, neutralization. So this is shown here. So alpha is now larger than beta. 
So in order to apply interference neutralization, we have to reduce the size of this block here. This is done here. Okay. Now the blocks can be moved down, leaving some empty space in order to send a blue signal, shown here basically, by utilizing interference cancellation as the receivers. Overall, as the size of the blue plus the green uh, block stays the same size of gamma over 2, the GDS stays constant. In this regime, in which the GDF increases here, the interference is so strong that we are able to cancel the interference completely. So in more detail, here again we have the, uh, the case where alpha is equal to gamma. Now if we move beyond, beyond this point where alpha is equal to gamma, we are not able to neutralize the interference anymore. Instead we replace these green signals by a larger blue block, as, as done here. Okay. The blocks can be moved down and up, basically. Okay, such that basically we have no overlapping here. But now we observe that basically there's a larger block unused, and then we can increase the size of the blue block, such uh, that uh, but by ensuring that we have no overlap. So this increases the GDF, and this is shown here. So more information and details on the achievability scheme we have used here and the upper bounds we have derived can be obtained in our paper. Thanks for listening.